Yep. Good luck. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Tommy with Miners AI. Uh, I'm sure you have the same. So I've read every startup book, and now they're they all recommend starting your pitch with an inspiring childhood story. The problem is that I'm working in mining, and childhood stories in mining are complicated. They're not of the most inspiring type, but yet we can really, really look at it thoughtfully. Every smartphone in this room contains a decent amount of child labor, of deforestation, of CO2 emissions, because of the critical minerals that they contain. There's a lot of efforts being made in the industry, but yet the road is still going to be very, very long. Demand is set to explode. If you look at copper, for instance, we're going to need more copper in the next 30 years than we ever have mined in history. So are we, how are we going to be dealing with that? Well, there's a bunch of good news, though. Right? The first one is that we're in Finland today. I love Finland. And one of the reasons for that is that they are operating mines in Finland for nickel. Nickel is a strong component in lithium batteries. And their mine emits 40 times less CO2 than the equivalent in Indonesia. So that's great. I mean, we need to bring mines back to industrialized countries. Well, where the heck are we going to do that, right? Well, my co-founder and I, we spent a long time looking into this, and we have the right profile for it. Mason was um, a professor in the biggest mining university in the world before he spent 20 years building AI tools for geoscientists in oil and gas. And I'm an ex-deep tech CPO. I've been with five startups building satellites for agriculture and for uh, energy. What we have realized is that Finding new deposits is a very, very complex task. It's actually not unlike drug discovery in biotech, if you guys are familiar. So it's very, very low success rates, all dealt with by smaller companies taking care of the risk and getting acquired when things are successful. We want to scale that with machine learning, with AI, data science. But what does it rely on? A lot of data. And that's why it gets complex. Because the data out there is public. You can get a lot of it. But it's super hard to find, super hard to process, generally speaking, very complex to make compliant with AI. A bunch of it is still on paper. So how do you work on that? 80% of the work in AI really has to focus on the data, generally speaking. And that's just not for us. It's for everyone working in there in the room, right? So we are super happy to focus specifically on that dirty part of the work. We have built a geological data platform and marketplace that contains a massive amount of data and that grows every single day. It contains all the infrastructure and the tools that every single company needs to work on their own data on a daily basis, something that only the biggest companies could afford in the past. It saves them years in the exploration process. And more importantly, it gives them access to many, many more opportunities to choose from, reducing the impact they can have on the environment. That's step one, right? It's a picks and shovel play for the exploration companies. Based on that, we're already helping investors who are ready to pay much, much more, by the way. We're helping them with due diligence, with deal flow, and with market intelligence. And there's a phase three, which is going to allow us to take, to, to take the company to 100 million recurring revenue. And that's every single industry that needs geological data, even construction infrastructure and geothermal projects. Great team, rock stars focused on geoscience, focused on data science, on software development. And I'm happy to say we've already processed 1,200 data sets. That means millions of points in the database, about 20 times faster than anyone else in the industry. Obsessed with feedback, we reached out with 1,500 uh, geoscientists uh, in the jungle. And I'm happy to say it's not two paid pilots, it's actually four. Because we got a confirmation for two more just last week when I was on my way to Slush. So, Going great, but we're looking for the right partners to scale this, right? We can have an impact on removing the bottleneck for the energy transition, and we have a massive opportunity to create a business that can grow and be super sustainable. Thank you very much. Let's rock this. Great. Uh, in the absence of Carla coming on stage, uh, I'll I'm start. Here. So in the beginning, you, wanted, uh, you, you mentioned all these emissions and child labor and unwanted yeah. stuff, but it seems that your product is actually just encouraging more of it by making yeah. the exploration phase faster. Absolutely. So that's correct. We're not encouraging more child labor, though. <laughs> but we need more mining, so there's two components to it. First, mining is currently harming, right? But we need a lot more of it. You're not really addressing the harming part of it. It's just the yes, I am. of the mines. Yeah. Let me get that. Uh, we are absolutely, because the strongest driver for the mining impact to be lower is to bring the mines back to industrialized countries. We are working in South America, in Canada, in the US. You don't have a single kid working there. But yet, we have de-invested in knowing where we could be building mines there. We are really reactivating that, that big time. 
right? So we're making sure that whenever we open a new mine, it's going to be in a jurisdiction where things are going to be properly managed, right? See what I mean? And so companies are already using like tools for for geo allocating these kinds of things. So, so what makes you guys unique, or what's the what's the AI sauce? Yeah, absolutely. So first, it's really uh, mainly a, a matter of focus. So we focus, as I said, on 80% of the dirty work. So it's really about capturing, standardizing the data that everyone, everyone needs. The status quo nowadays is that every time they start a new project, they spend one year just collecting this paper stuff, you know, the Excel sheet, the PDF documents, and formatting them to come to a decision. It's one year. Uh, it's, it, it's the same as if VCs would spend one year on due diligence for every single startup. It just makes no sense, right? So by crunching that, saves them time, gives them opportunities like by a hundred times more. So it's, that's really the activator. On the AI side, we have a lot of AI on upstream and downstream. Upstream is everything we develop to process the data much faster. Downstream is all the tools that we're building on the platform. Right? It's a lot of machine learning. It's a lot of identify correlation. It's a lot, of course, of LLM for classification, rack pipelines to make sure we provide some geological knowledge to the uh, LLMs. And it's a bunch of computer vision because there's so many maps out there that need, that need uh, processing. Thanks very much. <clears throat> so my company is actually uh, uh, has to do with mining, and we realize how dirty it is. Uh, we've also come across you know, a lot of investor feedback that says you've got to focus on responsible mining and just yes. source your minerals from only responsible mines. Yes. So part of our go-to-market is not working with the dirty guys and just focusing on the ones that can prove ethical uh, ways of working. Yes. Uh, now, on the other hand, this means that your go-to-market is therefore limited. So how are you thinking about your go-to-market, and how are you filtering the, vo the folks you're working with? The, it's really the geographies again. So who's active where, on what kind of commodity? No, I mean, honestly, if you look at the US again, and, you know, coming back to the mines in Finland, you're not going to have coal-powered power for mines in Finland. Just because the context around there is really important. You have a ton of bad players. And people tend to actually act very differently. You look at BHP, you look at you know, uh, operators of mines in the DRC. They have mines in some other places. And just, they put very different standards on operating those mines, depending on where they are. So I do strongly believe we need to promote mining in great countries, as opposed to going for irrealistic solutions like asteroid mining or going for even deep sea mining is never going to be monitored enough. So we need to focus on the solutions that work in the right geographies and giving them incentives to work much, much better. Right? When it comes, there's a bit of a contradiction. You do see a lot of oil and gas players willing to do carbon capture, you know, willing to do geothermal projects. How do we deal with those? You know? And I think as long as the project itself is positive, we can encourage that because it provides more inertia to, a, to an industry that's underfunded for now. See what I mean? So, so, we need to talk about that afterwards. It's an interesting day. Yeah. All right, our time is up, unfortunately. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for the great pitch. Thanks very Please much. Give a big round.